Hi, hi you guys, how's it going today? So as you can maybe kind of tell, it's uh, sunny out. And there's uh, absolutely uh, no wind. I mean, it's like maybe half half mile an hour. But we got a little bit of snow last night, not much. Uh, and with the uh, sun being out, it's... Uh, yeah, it's getting wet. And I'm not very damn happy about that, but then in a way I am because it'll uh, melt some snow. It'll actually kind of melt the driveway off. I got done scraping that off and then it kind of needs to sit for, I don't know, I suppose an hour or something and then it, I have to either scrape it again or Scrape it with the blower. I scraped it with the blower this time because there was some snow and stuff and I cleaned what I thought was important like the shop driveway and the main driveway and all that stuff. I didn't bother uh, and the, the ramp on the dike there. I'm cleaning that off too. I actually got done cleaning that yesterday because we had a little bit of snow but then it was mostly wind, so it blew it around. But then it started getting hard. So I figured, well, that's the really the only thing that needs to be cleaned out. So I cleaned it out. And then later that night, actually it would have been yesterday I cleaned it out. Yeah, because then later that night they were talking another half inch or whatever. I think we got at least half inch of snow. And it, uh, recovered everything but it wasn't really blowing around no it was more or less just falling straight down because it's been so warm out it's getting uh it's not above freezing but it's warm enough that obviously i can get around with no gloves on right now i do have my gloves on me but um and i was able to snow blow what what i had just wearing a regular hat. And because I think most of the customers one, the sun's out and there's no wind. So it makes things a lot nicer. But the driveway's drying off. And that's been, uh, that's actually kind of a nice thing. So if I can de-ice it as quick as possible. It's supposed to be in the 30s. Even I think one day they're saying 32. But I think it's supposed to be cloudy those, those days. So I don't know how much what's going to go on there and then you've got to take into account for the wind and everything else too so i don't know it may be fairly nice stuff nice enough out to melt some stuff or or it may not i don't know so anyways um had to run do some grocery shopping again ow so I figured I'd stop at the hardware and grab a couple small things. I grabbed, um, couldn't find, I wanted another one of these things because my other one's getting kind of wore out, but this one's, it's caught on an angle. The other one's just square. There's still a little bit of life left in that square one, but I wanted another one, but I couldn't find a square one, so I got that angled. That's just a block of sandpaper, a sanding block. Uh, for like paint and stuff. Um, I used that square one obviously quite a bit last year when I was doing some painting on the 1586 and whatever else. And, uh, you know, they get wore out after a while. I've had that one for a couple of years, but. And I want another one. And then I got a roll of sandpaper. Um, it's smaller stuff, but that's more or less to clean um like it's like your electrical system you know when you're cleaning if you happen to be trying to start something that's got dirty uh wires or whatever and you want to clean them up you can use that that roll of sandpaper so i think it was just 80 grit it should be enough i mean you can use it on other stuff too but for how small it is that 10 yard roll it uh yeah, it'll, it'll be good for cleaning wires and terminals and stuff like that and whatever else. So, got to roll that. 
And then, uh, yeah, I think the truck will even do, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, good enough. So, anyways, uh, so then, well, would have been whenever the last time I ran the 1586, which is, I don't know, that was probably about three weeks ago, I guess. Kind of just before this, the snow started falling down. But I had a battery die on, and I think it actually died on the tractor because, it, well, the last time I was running it, obviously I was running it to charge the batteries back up and then just to run it one more time. And then I had to obviously put it back in this parking lot and, you know, make sure it was sitting to my liking. So, but I figured, okay, well, while that's running, I'll go do a couple other things, you know. And then uh, I came back, hopped up in the cab, was getting ready to shut it down. I checked the, the voltage gauge, you know, that tells you if your batteries are charging or not or if the alternator is any good or whatever. It was fine. And I looked behind me to check up on the tarp, you know, on the little tractor, just to make sure it hadn't blown off or anything stupid like that. It's buried in snow now, so it's not going to go anywhere, but... And I looked back at the gauge, and the gauge was at zero. I was like, well, that's kind of odd. It usually doesn't do that, regardless. So, didn't really think nothing of it. Um... Figuring, well, it could be, the alternator could be going out. Or, you know, obviously, or a battery died or something, or both of them died. But I figured, hey, I probably won't be using it too much anyway, if at all. So, shut her down, took the batteries back out, and, or took them out, put them in the basement, put them on the maintainer, you know, to charge them back up and keep them looking strong and healthy so they could use them. And then I, uh, I can only, I use my battery tender, uh, I got, like, these little things, I got a new one of those last year, yeah, last year, and these are the more clumsy ones, but the newer ones are much smaller, but I go back and forth with that new one, I go from the tractor batteries to the Tahoe, because this one's for Big Red, and then I got one on the John Deere, so every machine basically has one, so, um, so, I charged, now I always check my batteries with the multimeter, and I do it before charging, during charging, after charging, and then a few days later after, you know, they've just been sitting idle and not doing anything, uh, just so I can get a reading of the batteries, so if I know they're crapping out or whatever, so just kind of lets me know what they're doing. So, I charge up the one big tractor battery, fully charged, green light, done. I moved over to the other battery, and since I use a maintainer, these are not really designed to charge batteries. They will do it, but they're slow, you know, and I don't care because it doesn't really matter because I'm not going to use the batteries for anything, you know. If, if I was going to use them right away, well, then I'd put my big charger on them, but since they're going to be sitting idle, idle now, they can just take their time charging up. It doesn't matter to me. So it takes about, if they're even half dead, maybe three days, four days max. You know, it really just depends. But um, once that battery is done, I moved over to the other tractor battery. And I just, I left. I was done for, I went, I went back like three or four days later. And checked that battery. Okay, fully charged. I'm going to put it on... Big Red's old battery, you know, just to make sure that was topped off. I figured, well, I'll check the, the big tractor batteries again. Double check them again. One tractor battery was down to 10 volts. The bad one. It's like, well, what the hell's going on here? This isn't right. This probably would explain why my volt gauge went to zero right when I was about to shut it off. So, I checked that battery. It said, like, 10.9. I went to, to, to the good battery, it was reading like 12.5, so that, that was still a, a strong, healthy battery. I even checked Big Red's battery, the old one, and that was still at 12.5, whatever, you know, it's where it's supposed to be at when it's just not doing anything. So, I, uh, 
I charged it back up again, that that damaged battery, or the dead battery, or whatever, and I figured, well, I'll leave it on the maintainer and watch it. So it took another three days or so to charge it back up. Okay, it was green. So then I think maybe, if, I don't know, a few hours later or something like that, I'm not really sure, um, it said that the, the the maintainer was charging the battery again. And I think, well, that's not right, because it should really just sit at 12.5 or whatever, 12.7 even, you know, if they're a good, strong, healthy battery. No problems. You know, they don't need to be on a maintainer forever and ever and ever. It's just if you don't plan on using them, you can just put a maintainer on them, and you don't have to babysit your batteries. Not like with a regular charger, you have to babysit them. This you can just plug it in and forget it. So that's why I... That's why I like these maintainers, because you can, it's a plug-in-and-forget setup. So, that's why all my, all my machines have them. So, <clears throat> so I charged it up, and it, it, it kept going through that cycle of charging up, draining back down, charging back up. So, I was like, well, this battery's got to be chooched. So, I took it off the maintainer. And then I watched to see how quick it would drop. And then going from like 13 volts, which is usually where they're at when they're completely maxed out, you know, on a maintainer, they will go down some, you know, if you disconnect everything. But it basically went from 13, whatever, 12, whatever, to 10, 9 within like half an hour. I was like, well, this battery is, this battery is chooched. The other one's still perfectly fine, but I imagine that's going to be the next one to take a shit. And, and it's kind of... I mean, it kind of sucks because these batteries are really not that old. Um, I think I got them back in... I know I dated the one, but... I think 2018 is when I got them. I think. I'm pretty sure of it. So... But... I don't know, they're not old, but kind of just sucks that they had that one that just had the crap out. So I imagine the other one's not going to be far behind, but, um, so yeah, so I had to go buy another battery. I got one that should be there now. I went there yesterday uh, to see if he had one. He didn't, so he had to order me one. Supposedly he could have, he says he could get one in tomorrow, which would be today for me, so... I want to go back there around 2 o'clock, 2.30, and see if it's in. Because they got to charge it up and put water in it and whatever else. So, um, uh, it's going to be another expensive freaking battery again. It's not really what I wanted to do. Um, I was going to wait until maybe spring and do it. But then I figured, well, what if, you know, we need the tractor? You know, it's not going to start on one and a half batteries, so, or even just one. So, it'd be, especially if it, if it should be cold out, you need big batteries to, you know, to get this thing to start. So, I don't know. It's, uh, it sucks because I can't get my bill ever down. My bill's going to be high for like ever now, but it is what it is. So, Things just keep taking a shit. So, I've been trying to fix things, you know, in the house. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it just, to me, it seems like when you fix one problem, small or big, doesn't really even matter, um, you have another problem. So, like, I bought, uh, a little remote control for my surround sound system in my room, because that remote, the original one was falling apart and taking a crap and my uncle tried to fix it a couple times but there's only so much he can do to it so i went to ch went to buy a new one and that's not the original one but it's it's designed for that type of surround sound that i have so that works perfectly fine but you know it's just this was you know quite a few weeks ago when i ordered that stuff and <laughs> now I got a dead battery. It's unbelievable. So, 
I just uh, can't really can't really get caught up with stuff, you know. It's like yeah, one thing breaks, you got another one that breaks. So you break one, you fix one, and you break another. I guess so. I don't know. It's just getting kind of frustrating because I'm trying to keep up with stuff, but you know, it's hard to do. It's hard to do. So, so I gotta get big red in the shop, but I don't know. It's a bad time to be doing it. It's luckily we've been having, you know, pretty good weather, so I'm not running my heaters full blast, so I'm not. You know, my electricity bill hasn't skyrocketed much. I mean, it still has, but eh, by the end of the year, it'll probably be tickling 400. You know, and that's in U.S. money. I don't know what that would be. I don't know what that would be for you Canadian guys, but uh, it's a lot for me. So, well, what are you going to do? You need heat, you need water, and you need food. So, <laughs> it's just a frustrating freaking thing to deal with, but... What are you gonna do? So I don't know, but I just kind of would like a stinking break. And it sounds like the young guy's gonna be coming with the bull. I thought my grandma was gonna cancel that plan. I don't. He doesn't know quite when he's gonna come. He hasn't really, um, you know, spilled the beans on that yet, or when he's thinking of coming. But he'll come when he's damn good and ready to. So. Um, I don't think I want him to come because now calving season is just all out of whack. It's just getting worse and worse. If they get pregnant now, they could be calving around this time. And that's what I don't like because, yeah, we're having a good winter so far. I ain't complaining. We have some snow. That's good. Even though I hate snow, but we need it for moisture. And it hasn't been extremely cold. Like we, I, I think the coldest it's been so far is like minus 15 Fahrenheit. Maybe tickling minus 20, but I highly doubt it. You know, it, it just really depends on where you're living. But here, it hasn't been that cold. Now, like last year, yeah, it was already minus 20 and 30. And, and as winter went on, it got colder and colder and colder. But somehow, still managed to shit snow all over the place. So... It's just, we had a lot of snow last year. Not really complaining either because, you know, it was, it was damn good moisture for the hay. And then on top of that, we got a flood. So, but the, but the problem is, is that the flood stayed way too long. If it would have gotten off our field at least a week sooner than it would have, I think we would have had a much better hay crop. So, that's why we ended up with less bales. We still ended up over the 100 mark. But... I want a flood, but I don't want it to stay for a whole month. You know, that, that that's what it did. It stayed for literally a whole month. You know, that was a month of growing time that our hay could have grew. So, but what are you going to do? I mean, we can never have perfect years. I mean, kind of as of right now, it's being pretty good. Like, it's almost a perfect year, but, you know, hell is going to come eventually. It has to. You know, so if we could get probably, I would say maybe another couple of weeks, give me a break from moving snow now because I moved snow for like two days in a row. Even though it wasn't very much, I just more or less, I'm picky and I like things clean. So, um, yeah, so I had to clean them. But if we could not get snow for a couple of weeks and then maybe get a snowstorm and maybe give us three inches and then quit for another two, three weeks, you know, I, I'd be good with it. That's how I would picture a good winter, you know, because we still want good snow fall for moisture. But I just don't want it to snow every stinking week like it has, like it did last year. You know, not that it was really a problem because obviously I had to, I got the John Deere blower, but, you know, I was spending a lot of seat time on that thing. So I haven't even driven Big Red in probably a good week or two because I've been on the John Deere. I've been on the John Deere for those two weeks, you know. And then if I wasn't on that, then I was on something else. So it's like, well, fuck. So I was out in the field 
um, when we had that last first snowstorm or whatever the hell it was, there was just enough gap there that I could, between the dike and the field, that I could just, you know, go right through it. So I was able to get out in the field and do some snooping around, but, I mean, eventually that's going to come to an end. So, but... I don't know. It's just it, it is what it is, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I wouldn't mind a good snowstorm every maybe two three weeks, but not every week or multiple times a week. On top of that, every two three weeks, good enough. Maybe three inches. I don't know. I don't mind a good winter storm. They're kind of they are kind of nice to watch, even though I don't like them. But it, it it's just like severe storms i like watching severe storms you know and mother's the same way we both like watching that type of stuff so of course you can find tons of videos on youtube i actually got a playlist on just severe storms not my videos videos of everybody from around the country you know posting videos but so but yeah so i don't mind a good storm you know it's just as long as the power don't get knocked out, you know, and stays out for hours and hours and hours. But it is what it is. So I don't know, too many projects and not enough time because I still got to get that stinking generator thing built too. But I guess it would be nice to have that for some power. At least we could, you know, maybe run a, well, we could at least run a, you know, a little space heater or something, you know, and, and uh, maybe a lamp or something, you know, or whatever. Just, Maybe they even just charge with our phones, you know, that like you need something. It's better than nothing. You know, we can charge our phones off of, like, Big Red and the Tahoe and the John Deere. Like, you know, those all have batteries on them, and they're all on maintainer, so their batteries are always going to stay topped off until the power goes out. But even then, though, they can sit for, I imagine, quite a few days without being touched. I've never had a battery on the John Deere fail I did replace it, but it was just because it was just so badly corroded. There was no saving it. But other than that, it was still charging and, and whatever. So, but, of course, Big Red, he's gone through multiple batteries. But that's just because that's just, just the way they are. So, but, I don't know. It just, it is what it is. So, I don't know. So, oh yeah, well, don't forget too, we have those, um, those tractor batteries, the 1586s batteries, and then I got Big Red spare battery. So we have plenty of power sources, you know, I can use, um, the, like, let's say if the Tahoe was dead and we couldn't start it, well, I could just, you know, jump, use a jumper cable or, or what's that what they're called, jumper cables, I guess, yeah, connect one to one end and one to the blazer, let it kind of just swap juice and then crank it over. You know, and then get it to run and then it can just sit there and run until it charges up the batteries. But, so we, we do have, you know, ways of getting things to go, at least for now, but I would still like to have a generator, even if it's just that homemade one there, you know, there. So, but what are you gonna do? Generator heads are expensive and then you gotta freaking figure out all the belts and, and pulleys and yada yada yada. So, that's actually another thing I need to buy for the Tahoe, too. I'm trying to get um, things going for, like, I'm putting things in there that we need. Like, I have hammers and screwdrivers, a bottle of oil, a spare taillight bulbs. I need to get some headlight bulbs. And then, you know, just the miscellaneous that you would kind of need, you know, if you should have something break but i really should throw i want to get a noco jump starter like you know the one i had for big red but obviously much bigger but it wouldn't hurt to have a set of jumper cables in there too we got one my grandma's vehicles have them the pickup has it and the pontiac has it so i need to get one for the tahoe i don't have anything for myself i usually just go steal theirs but i really should get one for myself throw it in the back and then there you go so but yeah maybe emergency kit or something i don't know this will just do one thing at a time but 
it is what it is. <laughs> so, but yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll just see. Uh, kind of what happens, I guess. But I'm gonna go back there later today and see if my battery's in. Kind of hope so. I mean, I don't really need it, but you never know. If my uncle, I guess what I'm kind of worried about is if I don't have batteries for my tractor and for some reason my uncle gets his fucking tractor stuck because he's been known to do that. Um, or if it should break down like it did the other year. Well, it didn't really break down. It just refused to run because it was so freaking cold out. But mine had a hard time running because I had, think I had water in the fuel. Um, so mine barely ran. Um, but we used my tractor to pull his tractor back into the yard so it would be closer, closer to, to his tools and be under trees and stuff where we could get some wind protection. So, yeah, that was a miserable fucking year. But I think I got the water out of it now, so it should run. I just normally don't really ever start it. Uh, last year, I think I only started it once. Because we know it's going to start. It's, it's, you know, it just needs to be plugged in for a few hours and then, you know, charged up batteries, can of ether. And that's another thing with my little can of ether. It's on the side of the engine block. That one's leaking for some reason. I don't know. It's just, it's just such a weird thing because if the can doesn't sit in there just right, half of the spray or the ether just sprays out and then there's you got a little half that goes into the engine block well that's a waste of ether but that can's like two or three year old two or three years old now because i don't really run it that much in the winter time unless we have to i have another can to replace that one but my uncle thinks that maybe it's, it's the little rubber thing because there's supposed to be a rubber thing between that that that's what makes the seal but I don't see anything wrong with it. Like, it's not cracked or bent out of shape or anything. Like it's normal. But I don't know. It could be getting wore down, I guess, to the point where it's not making a quite tight seal or... I don't know. But I just haven't touched it because we don't use it that much. And obviously, we don't need it in the summertime. So... But... I don't know. It's kind of an interesting thing, but why it's doing that, but it, it's been doing that for a couple of years. I just don't bother to really look into it because who knows what it is. Uh. And if that's, if it happens to be that little rubber thing, well, I probably would have to go through Case IH um, to get one. I don't know if Allstate Eggs, they probably could find one off a junk tractor, but what's the sense of getting a junk one? I mean, you might as well just go get a new one. I guess depending on price, yeah, but I don't know. I think I'll just get a new one, so, and be done with it. So, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess if you guys have any battery stories, let me know. Because I would like to know how many batteries you guys have gone through. I haven't ever gone through... Well, I've, I've, I don't know. I've never really had a battery just fail like that. I mean, Big Red's known to do that, but that's just because he's a prick, and that's how pricks are. So, um, but, I don't know. I've never had one just die and then not want to hold a charge. But I know that when I bought the tractor originally, it uh, originally just had like car batteries in there, but I think they were a little bit heavier than that. And you know, like maybe something for a pickup, but um, they were working good for a few years, but they were old. And I think that one winter it was just so cold and I left them out in there because I didn't think it would really hurt them all that much. I think those batteries froze. And then because they, for one, they started started bulging out I was like, well, that's a sign that they froze. So I had to get new ones, and that's when I bought those. So, but then I finally had one of those die on me. I still got one good one, so I'm going to keep it, but... Ah, these tractor batteries are just not cheap. You get a little bit of a discount if you can give them the core. 
which is what I always do. I don't even want the damn batteries anyway, so if it takes 10 bucks off my bill, screw it. I'll do it. You can have it. I have no use for it. I have no use for them if they're junk. So all they're going to do to me is just uh, take up freaking storage space, and then I have no room for anything. So, but I don't know. But yeah, you guys can uh, give me your uh, battery stories if you guys have any battery stories. If you ever had one, maybe actually blow up or anything worse than that, I guess, or whatever. Let me know. It'd be interesting to know what you guys go through. So, I always take my batteries out, so that's why I think they've been good so far, but... I don't know, my uncle always leaves his in. He got a new one, too, for his tractor a couple of years ago. And he just leaves it in there because he says, oh, they're brand new, so they can take it, but I don't know. He uses his tractor every week, so especially in the wintertime, so it makes uh, sense to leave him in there. But for me, since my tractor will sit there until we need it, well, man, it'll just, it'll just kill the battery, so I just take him out. So, but yeah. Anyways, guys, I guess I'm going to take off. Uh, you guys can uh, give me your battery stories if you have anything to share and whatever else. I'm going to go and i got to shovel this little bit of snow here, get it out of here because I don't like it. And it makes me pissed off. and I just don't like snow. You guys know that by now that I don't like snow because I don't. So... But yeah, anyways guys, I guess I'm going to take off, so I guess I have a good day and stuff and stuff, so yeah. Thanks for watching guys, take her easy.